Good evening, everyone. Behind the screens tonight with Daniela Upfield. Hi, everyone. Hi, David. Hi, Daniela. How are you? Hi, yeah. I'm good. Enough. <laughs> all good, all good. So we're going to start tonight with the little introduction from David Non Origin to talk to us about the series and also about the platform. So David, the screen is yours. Hi, Serena. Hi, Daniela. How are you doing? Um, hi, everyone. My name is David Moore. I'm co-founder of Known Origin. Uh, Known Origin is a digital arts platform built on Ethereum blockchain. And our mission is to get creative professionals closer to their fans and collectors and help them showcase and sell the work that they produce. And tonight we have Daniela with us. Uh, the Behind the Screen series is a great way of getting closer to the artist, finding out more about them. This is episode two of 2021. So I'm going to hand back over to Serena, let her introduce uh, the great artists we have tonight. And you guys have a great evening. I'll be in the background and I'll be getting some questions to you. Feel free to send any questions via Twitter to nonorigin.io. Um, and if you're in the YouTube channel, leave some questions in the chat and we'll get those to Serena. Um, let's have a great night and looking forward to this one. You take care and I'll speak to you soon. Hi, you're muted. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, Daniela, it's very nice to have you on this series, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be talking to you about your work. How are you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm great, and thank you for having me. I'm very grateful to be here. It's a pleasure. Um, so, I just want to get to know you a bit more, and um, as David said, you know, if anybody in the audience has any question, feel free to send them to us throughout this video um, live stream. Um, so Daniela, what about you based? Because I know you have, you know, so many interesting stories about um, the place where you live. Yes, uh, I'm based in Cape Town in South Africa. I was born in Joburg in 1999, which makes me 21. Um, and then I moved here when I was two. So I don't really remember Joburg much. And I've mm -hmm. been here for as long as I can remember. It's such a beautiful city and it's so inspirational. There's so much nature and the different parts that are all totally unique and yeah, I wouldn't live anywhere else it's beautiful nice well I can I can only imagine the place because I've never been but um actually I'm asking everyone watching if any of you has been to South Africa and how that felt or if you are living in South Africa um I know the, the, the surrounding has inspired many of your work, so I would love to ask you uh, what in particular has inspired the creation of your digital artwork? Um, it's many different things, but I'm really inspired by nature, especially animals and plants, uh, and lately as well, the ocean and the sky. So I live um, in an well, not in the est an estuary, but I live on the banks of an estuary, which is when the ocean basically comes in and forms a lake. Mm -hmm. So it's a saltwater lake. Um, and it's, yeah, there's so much wildlife and so many birds, plants. It's, yeah, it's very, very inspiring. So, yeah, all the birds that are around here, flamingos, um, pelicans, everything and yeah. seeing so many different animals every day it's just it's amazing mm -hmm. and what sort of attracts you to to bring these into a digital canvas um i've always loved animals ever since i was little my mom we went to a place it's called hermanus which is in south africa and i actually saw some whales and i'm i think five i made some whale um. noises and the whales actually came closer to the to where I was standing, which, yeah, uh, I don't remember it, but I think my parents were quite astounded. Um, I've always loved animals and whales, especially I did a drawing of whales a while ago. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you've been sort of portraying, um, you know, the landscape, um, but also animals and other elements in your work. So um, my next question is about what would you normally represent in your work and, and why? You know, you said that the environment and animals have been uh, important to the way you wanted to, to show your work. Um, but what else is also fascinating you? And I'm asking this question because I'm sort of like thinking about the series you have on an origin. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm also very inspired by other artists' work, classical artists um, and classical artwork. So the one series that's there is a series of statues. And that's also sort of the traditional art incorporated with natural scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one, study and sensuality. That's also to do with people and plants. Um, so yeah, the relationship between people and plants is also very interesting to me because I think people have a very deep connection to nature. Mm -hmm. And it gets lost in modern society, but I think it's there and everyone's very devastated by what's happening to the planet. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's because we really do care. And it's mostly the huge companies that are causing all the problems, not the individual people. So, yeah, I think exploring our connection to nature is really important and that's what's going to help us. Absolutely. Yes. And I think, you know, having the opportunity as an artist to convey that through art is a lovely way to communicate um, what you like to share with others and also to, to make everybody more aware of mm -hmm. what's happening and how to respond to the environment. So <clears throat> it's very important to do that. Um, and then you discovered crypto art. You're such a young artist. And, um, you know, sometimes I think of myself when I was your age and I didn't know the world probably as good as you and the people of your generation do uh, know it through the Internet, you know, and all the different tools that uh, we now have um, at hand to use. So I would love to know how you sort of landed onto the crypto art scene and how did you come across this wonderful space and how do you feel about it? Um, so my boyfriend's dad is a coder and he, it was in 2017, the end of 2017, he got very into um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And then not long after that, because he's very supportive of my art as well and always thinks of new ideas that I should try. And um, so he, really nice. yeah, no, it's great. It's great to have the support of um, not in-laws, but future in-law family. Um, and then he said, I think it was probably early 2018. He said, hey, there's this site called Super Rare and you can sell your art online. You should try. So I applied and I got in and it wasn't very big back then. So I think I uploaded two artworks and then sort of forgot about them. Um, and then halfway through last year, one of them got a bid and I'd totally forgotten about it. So it was quite exciting. And then I thought, oh, well, I'm drawing anyway for fun. So I might as well try it, sell it and see if I'm already doing it anyway. Um, so then I started doing it more frequently and it's it's been so amazing because I was never actually expecting to be successful as an artist. You know, you hear stories about artists starving in the attic and that, and even though that's not true, that's a stereotype, it doesn't really help you feel better. Um, so having a space where I could share my art, where people actually bought it and it got exposure to all sorts of people all over the world it's yeah just it's amazing and i'm still amazed every day that i have i'm so lucky to be in such a space as this mm -hmm. absolutely yes it's it's so exciting in a way and every time we do these behind the screen series talks um it's wonderful to hear the different stories of people and how they've uh, discovered the crypto art scene and uh, how they experience it 
Um, and I think there's a wonderful community uh, of women artists as well um, that have been coming to the crypto art space, which often feels because it's related to technology, very hostile for women artists, whether instead it's a very welcoming space. And um, I feel that it's been such a great place for artists to, to share their art and to communicate with one another, um, <clears throat> you know, through, through, through visual um, digital artworks, but also music and anything else, how this has empowered so many artists um, across the globe, especially now that we are in a way not able to meet in real life. Mm -hmm. um, this space has brought people together and make us feel very close. So how, how do you feel about the community and how do you feel part of it? Yeah, I think the community is wonderful. Ever since I joined, everyone was very welcoming and supportive. And I've had such support from people who I haven't met face to face. And I feel like they're my yeah. friends. And it's it's so amazing. I love the internet. I, also, I'm young, so I think we grew up with the internet. But it's mm. just, it's such a great way of connecting people from different spaces, different countries, and totally unique lives. And then everyone can share their experiences and learn and still kind of... But you never meet in real life because the chances of actually meeting up with this person are very, 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 especially now when you can't actually go anywhere. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. I'm gonna share screen now and show some of the wonderful wall works that um, you, Daniela, have created. Um, if that's okay with you, I would love to start from the works you have on a non origin, and then we can look at some of the inspirations that, um, have somehow influenced you to create the work. Would that be okay? Yes, that's great. Cool. So, <clears throat> just gonna go on to your non origin page now. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. So, I came across this work, which we also used for the um, for the banner of this talk. And I was very impressed by the use of color because this is a very simple um, image, you know, that is so powerful. And I think the colors, the balance of the colors, but also the way um, you have placed this, this woman portrait with the hand covering the eyes. I was, I was always curious to learn more about the story of the subject, but also what makes you what makes what made you feel about it when you were uh drawing it um well it's about people when they're alone not with anyone else or putting on a mask which is also that why they're the thorns in the tattoo mm -hmm. well some of them have thorns i'm not sure if i drew them on that one but it's like how you put up a put up boundaries and armor when you go out and you're not always your true self around other people. Um, but when you're alone, you are free to be entirely yourself. And it's a, like I was saying about the connection between nature and people. Um, and the reason the hand is over her eyes is so that she represents kind of people as a whole. She's not a specific identifiable person. Mm -hmm. She's, yeah, she just represents an idea rather. Um, and that is of people at their core being very vulnerable and connected to the earth. Yeah. And yeah, can I ask you yeah. about, about the, 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 the colors choice? Yeah, that was what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I like neon, sort of the 80s neon colors. So most of them are, especially the pinks. I use a lot of the pinks. Um, there's a brush on the app that I use. It's called the light brush. So it makes it look like they're glowing. And I really like that. Yeah. It's wonderful. I just love the hair, you know, how the flow oh, yeah. naturally around Thank the you. neck. I love hair. Hair's, uh, yeah. hair's one of my favorite things to draw. 
Yeah. In a way, you know, it feels so natural, even though you can tell that it's fabricated in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but there's this very strong relationship to, to something that feels so natural and intimate in what we see and uh, something that also has a distance from us. So these pieces are interesting to, to see in your collection. Um, I'm just going back onto your page because I know there's also other works. There are also other works that I'd love to discuss with you. But perhaps we can take a look at this one, which you recently added to your collection. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes, it's a collaboration between myself and Mont Blanc. Um, mm -hmm. He did the background, the mosaic pattern, which I think is amazing. Which is why I really like collaborations, because you end up with something so different than you would be able to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and and then, how, yeah. how did that work? How did you start doing the collaboration? Um, I sent sort of a basic sketch of the portrait. And then he did the background and sent it back to me. And then I did a more detailed, fuller image on top. Mm -hmm. um, and then tried to integrate the colors as well between what he'd done already. So that one specifically I liked, um, it's sort of the retro comics um, that I based the color scheme on. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. And, you. Uh, you know, you said that collaborations allow you to uh, somehow feel that kind of like unexpected response from another artist that you'll see in your work. Yeah. But um, does it not make you also feel that you have no control over what's going to happen? Or does that excite you in a way? Um, for me, it's nice because I always know what I'm going to do and to have something totally different that I'm not expecting is really great mm -hmm. because I can never do something I'm not expecting because I live in my head and I can tell what I'm going to do next. Yeah. Um, yeah. So having, I really like that about collaborations. I mean, they won't always work sometimes. The ones I've done have all worked, but I'm sure that there will be something that won't because sometimes your ideas are just too different, but that one worked mm. well. And I, was, I was very happy with it. It was actually in the future art exhibition which in Sydney which took place over this past weekend yes yes that's true that's true um I also wanted to go on to this work um because I would love for you to tell us more about how this um type of series came about I know we briefly discussed this during our, our chat before the live um and I'd love for you to explain to us more about um the what's what's happening in what we see you know the background uh the sky but also um the dynamic that you've created with the background uh with this kind of like waved clouds and the statue that's sort of like the cloth and uh, around um the, the statue as well it's kind of like mimicking the sky behind it yeah the fabric was very fun um mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very, as I said, inspired by traditional art. But it was mm -hmm. nice. So I placed this one in the context sort of more of when it was created, where we weren't so industrialized and there weren't buildings everywhere and it was more natural and there was the stars that you could all see. You'd see them all um, not covered with light pollution and smog and everything. Um, mm -hmm. So it's sort of like taking it back in time. But at the same time, with the colors, I tried to make it more modern with the brighter sunset kind of colors. So it was just, um, in, I enjoyed changing the context of, it's not like in a museum, it's in nature and probably mm -hmm. more similar to where it would have been. So there's the two statues. Mm -hmm. And it was and also can I... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. I mean, you can definitely see all these elements, you know, into into the work. Mm. Can I ask you something that just came to mind? I would love to know how classical art, in a way, 
is um, meaningful today and more specifically for you? So bringing something that, you know, comes from a past that seems so far from us now, um, what's the meaning that you like to give to it, putting it in a new context? And what do you think it could do to the viewer? Um, well, there's always a connection when you see something that you already recognize and that people love so much for the traditional mm -hmm. artwork. So it's paying homage to the artists and remembering, well, people already remember them, but mm -hmm. sort of trying to respect them. Um, and then at the same time, just for fun, doing some other things with it, um, modernizing it and seeing how it looks compared to the original, which is nice for mm -hmm. me. I like to experiment and rework things. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you. Yes. And in general, I think, you know, the, uh, sorry, I'm just going back to this. Um, classical art, in a way, has so many different layers, and especially now, you know, we can look at things and remember uh, what it was like to be an artist back then and what it is now. And we were talking about that kind of freedom that you've experienced through um, digital crypto art um, and having that ability of, of having your own space. So mm -hmm. perhaps that's interesting too. Um, then you send us this wonderful uh, work that you've done with the penguins. Um, would it be okay to talk now about these work and the inspirations of um, the the landscape? I know you also sent me some some other images, which I'm going to show in a moment. But okay. how 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 did you create this work and um, what made you sort of like putting it on the on the digital canvas? Um, so this one was also for the Future Art Exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a town, a naval town within Cape Town where I used to live with my family as a teenager. Um, and it had the penguins, the African penguins there as a colony. They're actually also called jackass penguins because they make sounds like a donkey. And I think it was the first night we stayed there. We heard these really strange loud noises and we were thinking, are there donkeys in this town? Or what did did we not know that there were donkeys? And no, they were just the penguins that we could hear from the beach. Um yeah. but they're they're so sweet. Mm. And they sort of you know, they waddle along and the tourists always chase them around, which made me upset because they kind of try waddle faster, but you can't really waddle any faster. Um, so that was based on them and then the lighthouse that's there as well. And then I took the inspiration from Van Gogh as well with the kind of swirly sky. The sky, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, I also think, you know, the type of blue you, you used in this one is, um, is very moving because the sky is melting in the sea um, and then the brightness of, uh, of the light that come from 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 the stars and uh, you know also from the seashore here um, yeah it brings back you know so many memories of when you you are in summer by the beach or you simply just have um, yeah memory you recall a memory of of what it felt like to be in such environment mm. yeah feeling that you know um, empathy with nature and that connection, yeah, it's very important. And you definitely allow the viewer to to feel that way uh, when looking at this work. Something similar also happens here, you know, with this little kid um, looking at um, an aquarium or what is it? Can you yeah. can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, it's an aquarium. I used to go to the aquarium all the time with my mom when I was little. And I just I would I'd spend hours just watching the way the kelp moved and the fish and how everything moved. And it was it's one of my favorite memories. And it's just so peaceful. Mm. And I still I still love the aquarium. Um, so that's why there's the little child it's based on. 
me when I was little and sort of the fascination, especially I think as children because they don't, I mean, mm-hmm. they know what fish are, but they don't understand as much what's in the ocean as when you get bigger. And then there's actually seeing all these things that you didn't really know existed and how they mm-hmm. move. And, yeah, it's, I love fish and marine life. Yeah, it's another world, you know. In some ways, is um, I'm just going back to here. Um, yes, in some ways, it's a complete parallel universe, you know, that lives in this planet with us, um, but is so far away at the same mm-hmm. time. So whenever we try and get closer to it, I think it's a it's a wonderful encounter. Yeah, it is, and we still haven't explored that much of the ocean. There's so much, it's most of the planet, and we still don't really understand it. <laughs> so I'm just going back to um, comments of people that are watching live. For, so first of all, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, Maxara. And yes, I agree with you that Daniela's drawings are wonderful. Um, thank you. And uh, very, very much inspiring. Um, I think we have a question here. How can young people like me start making cool stuff like yours? It's so beautiful. What is a good place to start? So a quite practical question from Kenny. What would you like to say to him? Um, you just, you have to already love it and be good at it. And if you already do, then you just keep doing it. Rarables, I mean, you can apply it to the other sites like Known Origin, um, but you do need a portfolio and it's still a very good idea, but while you're waiting to hear from them, you can also upload your art on Rarible and OpenSea because you don't need to apply to those. And it could also be a good way just to get started. Um, and then just do what you love and what you love drawing, regardless of what you think other people will enjoy, because then you're passionate about it and then it shows in your work more than anything else, really. So I think, and spend time on it. Just... Yeah, don't rush it or get stressed and try to do it quicker. Just take your time, do it. And when you're really happy with it as yourself, then you upload it and then people will see your passion. And I think you just go from there. I think that is a very good good advice. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing that. And also Lawrence is sending a very lovely message. Very nice. It reminds me of the old scratch board techniques. Uh, thank you. Yeah, a lot of people have told me that. And chalk, they say it also reminds them of chalk. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true in a way you know whenever you use something digital it can also remind you of something you can do on on a piece of paper um mm-hmm. yeah and sometimes you know it feels um i don't know actually question for you um do you miss like drawing or painting or is it something you've ever done or no, how does it make you feel draw. like the digital and the more physical contact with the with a brush for example yeah i mean i don't i don't really paint i get frustrated with paint i'm not sure why i don't like mm-hmm. i haven't tried oil paint yet because it's very expensive and i didn't want to buy it and i don't like it and then i've spent lots of money on all the oil paints but with acrylic it dries very fast and then by the time mm-hmm. you sort of want to blend it it's already dried and with mm-hmm. watercolor it's the opposite way you try paint on top of it and then it washes away and I I just get very frustrated with painting. But I really love pencil crowns mm-hmm. um, and I used to draw pencil crown drawings all the time and I also did um, pen and ballpoint pen and fine liner drawings. So I think the digital drawings are probably most similar to the fine liner drawings I used to do. Um, so I still draw with pencil crown especially. Um, but it's it's much more convenient. I do it on my iPad when I draw digitally. And you've got one pen, you've got a portable device, you don't need to sit outside to get the light right or turn on, put on lights and then your hand's casting your shadow or you can't see right because the light is yellow and makes your work more yellow than it really is meant to be. <laughs> so the digital is just, it's much more practical because mm-hmm. And it's also backlit, which is really nice. So it has a nice lighting effect that you don't get from 
hand drawings or you have to try really hard but they're not backlit with actual led lights so yeah for my sort of light pen it works really well i can't do anything like that by hand this is so interesting you know because i think some artists always feel these um difference between switching from digital to physical uh, and back to physical sometimes again um, but there's so many young artists like yourself that find digital art and the creation of the work so convenient and mm -hmm. so immediate to make you know if you have the urgency of creating you you know you can bring a tablet with you and then create and just mm -hmm. put it out there and sort of you know, um, put something you have in your mind or you feel into into digital art. So yeah. it's interesting to see how things are shifting um, and how fast this is happening, you know, it is. and how fast you can share it as well. It is. And it's also nice because you have different layers. So it's physical artwork. If you do lots of sketching, your lines are still visible and you can't really erase them. Where with digital art, you can just erase the layers. So sketching for me is much, much easier digitally. Mm -hmm. um, but when I had a drawing tablet, I didn't like that because that felt very disconnected to me because you're drawing on the tablet, but your drawing isn't what you are drawing. Your drawing's on the screen separately. And your tablet mm. that you're drawing on is not your artwork. And I didn't, yeah, I didn't like that. But the iPad is great because it's you drawing on the screen and you can see it appearing as you draw. So I think it depends on the person. Mm. I'm interested to know if anyone uh, here tonight watching this live conversation, you know, how do you create digital art? And if you want to share those thoughts with us, I think it would be great to to hear from you. Um, if there's any artists in the room, because I'm sure there are. Um, I would love now, if that's okay with you, to move to some inspirations you sent to me uh, prior to this talk. Um, about movies and things that um, sort of trigger your imagination or, or brings back, bring back memories to you um, and how those influences um, sort of appear in your works. Would that be okay? Yeah, that would be good. Cool. So I'm just going here, um, actually here. Here we go. So, yeah, yeah so tell us. What is this? Studio Ghibli, I think it's pronounced, mm -hmm. um, which is a Japanese studio, and they make anime movies. Um, and they're also very, very natural. And since they're Japanese, they're different to what we mostly see in kind of Western culture. Mm -hmm. And they're quite slow-paced, not in a boring way, just in a very different... It's not intense with lots of fighting and action. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it is just the scenery, and like this movie is called Porco Rosso, and it's about a pilot who turns into a pig. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it's just him flying around, and you see the sky and the clouds. And it's I've watched them. I watched. I think I watched Spirited Away when I was three, I think, mm -hmm. in the cinema. And a lot of people found well, children found it scary, but I thought it was amazing. I loved it. I think I was quite weird, but that's it's okay. Um, and since then, I've just I've always loved them, these movies, and mm. I think that is where I get a lot of my sort of landscape. And I don't draw the landscapes, but I am very inspired by them. Yeah, absolutely, it's really nice here, all the green and the blue of the sky, and uh, I can definitely see this um, sort of like present in your work in some ways. Um, you also sent me those ones, and yeah, yeah, that one's also from the same series, or? yeah, it's from the same studio. They make different movies. This one's Hal's Moving Castle, which has been my favorite movie, I think, for 10 years, and I, I think mm -hmm. it will always be my favorite. Um, it's also it's a castle that moves on legs and it's like walks through the mountains, and it's a whole story that's not related only to the castle, but it's, it's beautiful. And that's, I'm mm -hmm. actually drawing that picture by hand with my pencil crown, so it's like my relaxed drawing. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a sketch on my iPad and then I printed it out. So I had a nice, I made like a coloring page for myself. So 
started the sketch, printed it, and now I'm coloring it in with mm -hmm. pencil. So I suppose you can also integrate the digital and the physical artwork if you want to, depending on how. So it's, yeah, it's this little monster that lives in the forest, my neighbor Totoro. Mm -hmm. And then you also shared um, this one. Yes. As well. Yeah, that was Spirited Away, which I saw in the cinema. Mm. And that scene is my favorite because there's a lot of, there's a train that runs through and then there's a lot of rain and the whole of the low-lying area just gets covered in water and you can see the train driving through the water. And there's actually a part in Cape Town, it's called Lakeside, where the train runs through the reeds and the water is not much further below. And it always reminds me of this movie whenever we drive past. And it's very close to where I live. So that's, that's really amazing. That's wonderful, yes. And um, it's really nice to see where in, um, in animation movies like, you know, this one, <clears throat> you find so many references that often are not something you may see when, you know, you look at a cartoon because you may not pay attention to those things. But it's interesting to see how you notice um, things that are close to you and how you bring them back into your work. Um, and it's fascinating when you said also about making art because it makes you relax and, you know, it's just your um, enjoyable moment. Um, so my, my question to you, Daniela, is what is art for you? For me, it's, it's like meditation. It's very, it helps me if I'm anxious and mm -hmm. it's very therapeutic, especially the lines, because you're just drawing like lots and lots and lots of curving, waving patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I'm stressed or upset, I just, I feel so much better by the time I'm done because it's just sort of very peaceful, therapeutic work. And yeah, I think the landscapes as well, because then there are things that make me doubly relaxed because I love the landscapes and I love the drawing and then combined, it's just very, mm. very yeah, calming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd say meditation for me, that's mm. what it is. Yeah. What I can notice from these pictures you shared is that, you know, often we um, pay attention to what we see in the forefront of the image, which might be, um, you know, the, the, uh, this plane. But then if you look at the background, you know, the islands, the sky, the blue of the ocean, um, and I can definitely see how you pay attention to those elements as well and how you take them back into your into your digital creations that's very interesting because that tells me how you as an artist go beyond what most people see um and elaborate those concepts into something that is close to to your heart yeah no that's an interesting observation i hadn't thought of that yeah i have always noticed the landscapes in movies i think also because my dad always points them out when i used to watch movies with him Mm. And he just, especially with these ones, he'd say, wow, look at the landscapes, look at the scenery, they're so amazing, so beautiful. Look at the cinematography in this movie, they've done such a great job. So then I think I pay attention to the artistic aspects of the movies more than I would have yeah. before. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, you definitely have to have, um, you know, an eye for such things, you know, you have to train. Your yeah. brain. Yeah, I'm definitely trained. Look at those things. Yeah. We have a couple of questions for you, Daniela. So one is from Nacho, and is uh, what are your goals as a crypto artist? How do you imagine the future? Which is a very interesting question to be asked to, to a younger artist. Um, I haven't thought too far in the future because. I used to do that and it would make me stressed. <laughs> so now I just focus on what I'm doing now. But I just I imagine myself trying to, because what I always do is I try to be better and improve on what I'm doing. So I'm curious to see how my art goes and how it changes and develops as I change my style and learn new things and improve. Thank you. Um, yeah, and just, I don't know, I suppose finding more people who are crypto artists and maybe 
connecting. I really love the community. So that for me is such a, that's an amazing thing. So connecting and improving. Yeah, absolutely. Having such a great community is so powerful in a way and it makes you feel in a safe space. Um, there's one more question for you from Lawrence. Um, this is all really impressive work, Daniela. Where and when did you learn the concepts of basic design uh, that are evident in your work? So um, yeah, I've always drawn ever since I was a toddler. My parents still have my first drawing, which is in a telephone book. And I don't know, I don't think it's very good, but they thought it was very good, so that's why they still have it. Um, and I've it must done... have been good then, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, they keep joking that one day they're going to sell it because it will be worth a lot better. I don't believe them, but it's nice that they think that. Um, so I've always done drawing. Um, I did. I looked at a lot of drawing books when I was about 13 and did, you know, you have like the circles and the lines and this is how you draw a figure by connecting the lines and then you sort of build basic figures from that. Uh, I always did art in school. Um, I did art in high school, which really helped as well. So we did, there's a very interesting exercise called blind contours, where you draw without looking at your drawing. And it's very good for training your brain. Um, because then you're really seeing it, you're not simplifying it in your mind. And drawing, like with a cloud, you don't draw like the kind of candy floss shape. You actually look at it and you realize it's actually different shapes. And then you draw it. You don't look at your drawing. And the drawing looks really weird in the end but it's very good for your brain and it's trains your eyes mm. to see things properly. So I think it's a combination of self-taught books and school and my parents as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely, you know, see all these elements in your work and it's interesting to, to notice that and to know the story behind it. Um, so as we are kind of like coming to an end to this live talk, I would love to hear from you what's coming up next for you. If you have any project you're currently working on or what do you have, um, you know, if you made any plans for this year yet? Well, I haven't thought that far in advance um, at the moment. This year I've been trying to do more detailed art, like the mm -hmm. one of the swirling skies. Um, rather than the, um, rather than the, the study and sensuality one with the pink lines, mm -hmm. which is really good as well, but I'm trying to do sort of more in-depth work, um, for the moment. So I think I'll probably do some more landscapes, different places. Um, the next one, the one I'm doing at the moment is Namibia with sand dunes and some animals that you find in Namibia as well. So I went on a trip with my boyfriend and his family to the Orange River, which is on the border of South Africa and Namibia. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really, really amazing. Fireflies and beautiful stars in the night. Um, so I think I'll try and incorporate that in what I'm doing now. And yeah, really enjoying it. Yeah. We're gonna we're very going to look forward to that, Daniela, honestly, because um I love so much how you integrate nature in your work and uh, oh, how do you make it, you know, part of um of the elements you bring together on the on the artworks. Um I also loved everyone's question tonight. So thank you so much for asking them and for sharing your thoughts. Um <clears throat> I would love to remind you that Daniela's work is available on Non Origin and uh, you can support Daniela uh, by purchasing the work as well. Um, the series are very wonderful. And I think what, uh, you know, by listening at the stories of the creation of the work, it really um, announced the, the, what we see and what we collect. So um, it's been wonderful talking to you, Daniela. If there's anything else you'd love to share, uh, or if you want to make any recommendations to movie or music that inspires you as well, because I know we spoke about it last night as well um, before this live chat. 
Um, but that's interesting to know how artists also get inspirations from different movies or, or music as well. Um, you also told me about artists that inspire you as well. So um, would you like to tell us a bit more about who who has inspired you recently or who you're looking at in terms of like artworks? Well, I have, I have so, so many. Um... Um, I really like book illustrations, especially. I like that the way that because I read a lot, so I like the way that they combine the image you're imagining with an mm -hmm. image that's actually on the page. Um, so there's Chris Riddell, who's a very well-known book illustrator, and he's definitely one of my favorite also, well, not also illustrators. Um, there's Kirby Rosens. Um, well, I'm not sure how you pronounce his surname. But he did adult coloring books with animals and like whole lots and lots and lots of little details. Mm -hmm. um, you'd probably, if you looked for adult coloring books, you'd see him there. And he's on Instagram. Um, and within the space, there's also many, many, but uh, lately, especially Christy Glass has been very inspiring for me um, because she does really great concept artwork that I um I'm not great with concept artwork or sort of I'm quite I struggle to lose like control. I mm. kind of do like more relaxed things. So I really admire her ability to do that because I can't. So it's it's really amazing. And we did a collaboration as well last year which was it was great where it was like going backwards and forwards and we'd both change things and edit things and make it better. Um, and the movies, I think, as well, the ones that I mentioned already are definitely worth watching. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's Studio, Studio Ghibli. Yeah, that's interesting because it's something I've never, you know, it's the first time somebody comes with such a suggestion, which I love so much um, because you would not expect it. And um, as I said uh, earlier on, I think that the the environment and the nature is so present in your work in a way that really makes you feel connected um, to what somehow we tend to feel disconnected sometimes. So um, I really enjoy your work as it really goes, you know, um, it touches so many levels in terms of like emotions and, uh, and, and what you see. So it's pleasant to watch, but it's also having you know it's filled with meaning so yeah. um it was very interesting to talk to you about how you create the work and what that mean that meant to you, uh, you from the creation until the moment it sort of leaves you and uh, goes in the hands of of people that collect the work and also experience the work digitally and uh, and beyond that so Daniela, it's been a very um, interesting conversation that we had. And thank you so much for joining us during this Behind the Screen series. Um, it's been very lovely. Um, also, thank you, everyone, for asking questions and for being with us tonight. Uh, but most of all, thank you for, for sharing the work and the stories behind it. Thank it's you. Been thank a you pleasure. so much for having me. It's, a, it's such a great opportunity, and it was really nice to talk to you as well. It's our pleasure. Um, thank you, everybody. So we'll see you again um, for another appointment with the Under Screens in a couple of weeks. Daniela, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we'll look forward to see more of your work. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.